Hey everyone, and good morning from the happiest place on earth, Disneyland, here in Anaheim, California. I'm a legend, joined by my wonderful girlfriend, Molly. And in this video here, we're gonna take you on a full walkthrough of Disneyland Park. We're gonna show off every ride, restaurant, shop, just give a full walkthrough, share some thoughts, and let's uh, go wander around. Now, I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate that I get to travel a lot. I've been to just about every major theme park in the country, some of the best ones in Europe, and without a doubt for me, easily Disneyland is my favorite theme park I've ever been to. It is absolutely wonderful. You go underneath the train station here and enter the world of yesterday, tomorrow, and fantasy. And I love it here. It's without a doubt my favorite park. It's wonderful. Uh, There's so many rides and so much rides, fun snacks, great food. Uh, you know, parades and shows and fireworks, nighttime spectaculars. It's really wonderful. So I hope uh, how much I love this place will come up in the video here. Now, wandering in, you got a uh, city hall over here on your left, which is guest services, which is not, not normally fun, but if you have like disabilities, I think you go over there to get a passes and uh, complaint department as well. In the hall, yep. More fun over here on the right side is great moments with Mr. Lincoln. There's also a Disney Anna store. And there's also like a little Disney museum in there as well, like Disneyland Museum. And there's Goofy. Goofy's Goofy. over there. Turn and go up Main Street here. Also, Disneyland, it's, it's very pretty. Like everything's very well kept. Yes. Like they don't tend to get let things get run down all that much. And there's Pluto over there by the fire department. Of course, above the firehouse was where Walt Disney famously had his apartment back when he was alive. Now, Main Street USA, if you haven't been here, it's mostly uh, shopping and restaurants or sh and uh, food stands, things like that. Also, character meet and greets in the morning, like Minnie Mouse is over there. And they've got all these transportation vehicles that'll take you up and down the street. Uh, now, this one's my personal favorite, Molly. I love the Omnibus. You get that second story view of Disneyland. Yeah, the top. Yeah, the top level. Top front, I remember. Yeah, you top were there front, that. absolutely. Now over here on the left is the Emporium, which is uh, your biggest gift shop you have. But what I love about the Emporium, they have these uh, kind of magic windows as you walk by and they change. There's like kind of small scale animatronic scenes, but then the, the sheens will completely change. Like this whole riverboat will drop down, and it'll bring up a spooky forest. And you, oh no. And it's uh, like Toy Story. And they're really cool. So if you have some time to kill before a parade or something like that, check these out because they are really, really neat. It's long yeah, some of the, some of those cycles are pretty long. Over here, you got the Magic Shop, the Main Street Cinema. Uh, very important for a lot of guests as you come in over here in the Market House. That is your Starbucks. Very long line. Very long line in the morning. Continuing up the street here. Now you do have more and more shops and things like that. Over here you got Disney clothiers uh, on your left. Well, that, that is a, that's quite the outfit. And then you've got uh, the Carnation Cafe, which is a, a very popular cafe style restaurant. I think that's a full service restaurant as well. I'm going to go ahead and get on the, the correct side of the street so I don't run into people. Main Street is filled with detail. Some of the stuff I love is that uh, the windows on Main Street where they have, if you did some like, it's just essentially kind of like a Disneyland Hall of Fame. So, uh, or like a Hollywood Walk of Fame, except they put it on the names on the windows. And that's sort of like the, the greats that have built Disneyland. You got the Penny Arcade over here on the left. A couple of games in there, but mostly candy. And then more shops over here. A wonderful porch. Yes, it feels old timey, it feels small. You still got the uh, the railroad tracks in the street. Here comes another one of the Main Street vehicles. And unlike Disney World, they run the vehicles. Oh, a lot more, yeah. A lot more. But you got a Coca-Cola refreshment corner over here. Now you're getting into the main hub of the park. So this is uh, if you want to see those nighttime fireworks spectaculars, this is where you're going to want to be in this area here. And of course, I can't mention the corn dog cart. Wonderful, wonderful corn dogs. I'm hoping to get a corn dog in a little bit because I really like the Disneyland corn dogs. Uh, you do have some more restaurants over here. You have the Plaza Inn and then the Holly Jolly Bakery. Delicious. Delicious, yeah. Especially, I'm more of a fan of the Holly Jolly Bakery than I am the Plaza Inn. But then you get to the, the main hub of Disneyland here, and this is where you kind of you have your choice of where you want to take your day. 
Um, and the, if you go to the right over here, you'll have the entrance to Tomorrowland. Dead ahead is going to be Fantasyland, everything. A couple entrances to Fantasyland, too, because you've got the one by the Matterhorn, or you okay. could walk straight through the castle, past the, the partner statue here of, of Walton Mickey. There's the Fantasyland Fair area over here, which is home to the Princess Meet and Greet. There's also a wonderful stage show retelling they do over there. And uh, Molly's favorite, the Maurice's Cart. Ooh. With the, uh, the garlic bread or ch garlic cheddar bread twist. Yeah. You can go through the, the Frontierland entrance over here through the fort. But we're gonna go, starting this way, and walk through Adventureland. Adventureland, obviously one of the oldest lands in the park, open with the park in 55. I do love the entrance, especially with the fire, with yeah. the tiki room. Especially in the evening, kind of. It oh, looks yeah. great. Now, I believe that's a newer sign as well. I think as part of the, the project start, as they replaced the sign mm -hmm. to make the pathway wider. Which was needed. Yeah. You've got the Enchanted Tiki Room over here on the left. A classic animatronic show. And more importantly, they have the famous Dole Whip stand right there. Big fan of Dole Whip. Super delicious. Uh, pineapple soft serve ice cream treat. And they do have mobile ordering here too at Disneyland, so that's a big tip. If you don't want to wait in line for a quick service food restaurant or even the food stands, Get on the Disneyland app, hook up your credit card, make an account, all that kind of thing, because you can mobile order and it's gonna be uh, a lot quicker. <laughs> Big gift shop over here selling a lot of like Indiana Jones and Adventureland style stuff. Now we've been at the park for a while, but we're about to come to our first ride. Before we do, there are more tiki torches over there. Leads to the tropical hideaway, which has more treats and bao buns and different flavors of dolem. Also, a cool animatronic over there, Rosita the Parrot. As you can see, that shop I mentioned earlier selling the Adventureland and Indiana Jones stuff does go on for a while. Then it becomes a seating area for the Bengal barbecue over here. Delicious. Yes, the Bengal barbecue is like meats on skewers and it's wonderful. One of my favorite Disneyland snacks. I'll probably mention that quite a few times. Now, here is the world famous Jungle Cruise. A classic, one of the opening day attractions here at Disneyland. It's a silly safari boat ride. And then right next to it is the entrance to Indiana Jones Temple of the Forbidden Eye, which is uh, probably my second favorite ride in the entire world. It was my favorite ride for like 25 years until this year. And um, it's awesome. That's where we're heading now. We'll catch up you after we ride. Moving along again, love that ride. Absolutely love that ride. And there's one final part of Adventureland over here before we move into New Orleans Square, and that is a walkthrough attraction, the Tarzan's Treehouse. Obviously, walkthrough attraction, so it never has a line, so I do recommend you do it. Plus, you do get some cool views of, uh, of Disneyland up there. Now, moving along into the New Orleans Square section of the park, home to arguably the two most famous Disneyland rides. And also home to the, the Rivers of America, the big uh, the big river. As you can see, the sailing ship Columbia is going to go go right by us here. That was that was good timing. That was very good timing. Yeah. Now you do board the sailing ship Columbia over in Frontierland, but if I turn around over here, that is the entrance to Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, one of the world's greatest dark rides. Uh, it's awesome. Super long too. It's, it's a good 15 minute ride. Uh, just just fantastic. Oh my gosh! Oh, this is kind of a roadblock. I do like with the ships you can board. It's two different types. Yes. Uh, right now the Mark Twain's closed for refurbishment, but uh, they do have the sailing ship Columbia, and there is the Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, those are worth going on too because they have a whole bunch of cool like show scene kind of things on. On, uh, Tom Sawyer's Island. Now let's take a walk through New Orleans Square proper as I love this, this side street area of New Orleans Square. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, not a fast pass attraction, so it, but it does have a very high capacity, so that line moves very, very quickly. But it does tend to carry like a 20 to 30 minute line most of the day. As we move into the, the courtyard area here, you do have the Royal Street Veranda, famous for the uh, the soups and the bread bowls. Now, mostly seafood based, so not, not my, really my thing. But uh, clam chowder, there's a steak gumbo now. Might have to try a steak gumbo. Pirates of the 
Caribbean gift shop. But I just love this area of the park. It's very well themed. Like, it is. Very, very well themed. It, it feels like New Orleans, except without the drunks and the pee. And that, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I, I love the city of New Orleans. Ah, uh, the smell. Yeah. You could do yeah. the smell. It doesn't have the smell, which is nice. <laughs> uh, here is the entrance as well to the Blue Bayou restaurant. Probably my favorite place to eat a sit-down meal here at Disneyland. That's the one you pass in Pirates of the Caribbean. So you get to watch the boats go by. You can eat the Monte Cristo sandwich, which is just wonderful if you go for lunch. And you have like a waiting area over here. A couple more fancy shops. A crystal shop, a fancy lady shop. Oh, it looks like we're gonna go past a pirate band. Perfume shop over here. Pandora bracelet shop. And there is the entrance to the famous Club 33, the private members only, very, very expensive uh, <laughs> club that you could join if you have tons and tons of money. And then a couple of cool things, you kind of exit the back street over here, you got it. The New Orleans Square train station, which is one of, I think there's four train stations here up for the Disneyland Railroad. Uh, New Orleans Square, Main Street, there's one in Toontown slash Dynasty Land, and then one in Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. And then this long line over here, that is for the uh, the Mint Julep Bar, home to Mickey Mouse shaped beignets, another wonderful, wonderful Disneyland treat. But normally it has a pretty long line. Yes. That one. Worth it, but has a long line. But sometimes they have specialty flavors. Yeah, too. normally they do. Yeah. Uh, also, a French market is a quick service food establishment there as well. Big seating area. Sometimes they have bands play over here in this covered section. Now, one of the rides that is closed, unfortunately, during our visit here, because you really you can't get everything while you come to Disneyland, is the Haunted Mansion. We'll pass by in a moment. But there's a Princess Tiana. It's always nice to see the, the characters just wandering around Disneyland. Yes. It's a very different feel than Disneyland. Yes. Where the characters are uh, more sporadic as opposed to, uh, you know, designated meet and greet areas. Correct. Like we just saw we, earlier today, we saw um, Mary, uh, Mary Poppins, Poppins and a giant penguin just wandering around the park. Yep. She's like, they walked around for like holding hands. kids' hand. It was really neat. And there goes Princess Tiana back to her home, I guess. Now this is also where you can board the rafts to go over to Tom Sawyer's Island or Pirate's Lair at Tom Sawyer's Island. And this is where they do their big nighttime show, Fantasmic, some nights. And if you had the opportunity to see Fantasmic, definitely do it. It's amazing. The, 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 there's tons of characters and stunts and animatronics and special effects. It is uh, probably my favorite theme park show. Yeah, honestly. it's definitely a, one of the best nighttime shows. Yeah. And there is the Haunted Mansion all behind tarps. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, New Orleans Square known for those two attractions. Pirates, as we showed you earlier, and the mansion here. I yeah. do like how they put, uh, well, even the mansion is closed to get fixed up, they still make it look like the Haunted Mansion. Uh, yeah, no, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, Haunted Mansion's great. One cool thing about the Disneyland version, they do, during the months of like October, November, and December, they change it into a Haunted, uh, a haunted Mansion holiday. So it features like the Nightmare Before Christmas characters. And uh, so that is uh, pretty exciting as well. All right, they're up to boarding group 27, Molly. Woohoo! We're four more to go. Four more. That's when we get our uh, our ride on the Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> Moving along here, we uh, exit out of New Orleans Square and into Critter Country. Not one of the, the larger areas here at Disneyland Park. But again, home to one of their best rides, Splash Mountain right here. Now Splash Mountain, you do get very wet. Yes, if you're used to the Orlando version, this one, they do splash you. And I'm curious, like we're here, it's not not very warm today. I forgot. Like do they turn down the splashing today? Probably not. I would hope so, but I'm really not sure. Not now. But a uh, great ride. Long ride, tons of animatronics, obviously big drops. And honestly, the most fun parts of the ride is what you don't see. Yeah, inside? Inside, yeah. It's a very long ride, too. Yes, another... A lot of them here at uh, Disneyland, you get really your... Uh, long kind of your bang for your buck. <laughs> Moving along here, uh, I guess if you have healthy eaters in your group, maybe this would be for them. You buy craisins and fruit. Yeah, that's my sister's stand. Yeah, that would be your sister's stand. 
<laughs> We'd be over here at the Hungry Bear. <laughs> I guess probably not running today with the cold weather is the Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes, which is exactly what it sounds like. You board these big giant canoes and you just go around the rivers of America. I've never done it. No. Part of me really wants to do it, but I feel like it'd be exhausting. It is, yeah. If, if you don't row, you don't go is the, the motto there. Yeah. Um, there you can see the train going over there in the distance. And I will say with the Disneyland Railroad, my favorite routes are if you go from New Orleans Square to Tomorrowland, no, Tomorrowland Square to Fantasyland, because you get to go past this area here and there's, uh, as you can see, some animatronics over there, but they've got some other ones, there he is. And then my absolute favorite is from Tomorrowland to Main Street, because that one has dinosaurs. No. Tomorrowland to Main Street, with dinosaurs. Tomorrowland to Main Street. Yeah. All right, I would say you can count those uh, yeah. Tomorrowland. No, I'm that you don't get to see anything. Yeah, that one is yeah. boring route. All right. Here you got the Hungry Bear Restaurant, a place I have never eaten at Disneyland. I've heard good things, like it's got a lot of fans, but uh, I've never eaten there. You should definitely check it out one time. Yeah. Moving here, uh, this does lead you to kind of a dead end over here in the Critter Country section. Obviously, you can see all the people going that way, and that path leads to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That's where we're going to pick up this video in a moment or two. Just wanted to take you guys into uh, Critter Country a little bit deeper. Obviously, if you're not using the Max Pass, this is where you do get in line for, this is where you get your Fast Passes or get in line for Splash Mountain. Another wonderful ride over here is the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Small scale Fantasyland style dark ride. Normally not a very long line. Yes, High capacity. In a, uh, in a weird spot. Weird spot. Like only a five minute wait. We've still got four boarding groups to go, so we'll probably hop on the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And as you get towards the end here, there is a kind of a gift shop in the back. I believe you can also meet the Pooh Bear characters back here. And uh, there's also a Winnie the Pooh Bakery, mm -hmm. which serves some pretty fun treats. And the shop that you exit into, uh, like next to, for the, the uh, Winnie the Pooh is really cute. Yeah. So if you have uh, Pooh Bear fans, yep. this is going to be your corner of the park. But we are going to uh, stop recording here and show you the pathway to Galaxy's Edge. So we're back over here by the Hungry Bear restaurant. Get ready to go on the pathway towards Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the uh, the newest section of Disneyland Park. Now, we have, I've been to Galaxy's Edge on both coasts. Uh, obviously, we live in Orlando, Florida, so it's very easy to get to Hollywood Studios. And here, we actually, we've been here once. We came out here briefly after opening. We got in during when they were doing like the preview phase. So we've been on the one out here. And it's it's really, really neat. Also, it's kind of neat. I've never been on this pathway in the park because when we entered during preview times, we were over there. So you do get a cool view of that, uh, the train trestle bridge and that kind of stuff here in uh, the Country. They have three entrances. Correct? Yeah, three. Three entrances. Today. Yes, there's the Critter there's Country one. Two in Hollywood Studios. Yep. There's uh, Critter Country, a uh, Frontierland, and then one more towards Fantasyland. So the big deck here and for the Hungry Bear Restaurant. And again, when I was talking about how that that was my one of my favorite parts of the train, you do have you get to go past like this really pretty scenery and uh, a couple of animal animatronics and things like that. As we are on the course over towards Batu. Now, Star Wars Land does have like eight different names. It could be Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, uh, the Town of Batu, the Black Spire Outpost, Star Wars, yeah, Star Wars oh, Land. Star Wars Land, as <laughs> most people call it. They're trying to avoid. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> Didn't do a very good job. Well, it, it also it fits like it's it's Frontierland and Adventureland and Fantasyland and Star Wars Land and Star Wars Land. Yeah, it, it, it sort sort of fits. Now I will say uh, the big new ride here at Disneyland. We're recording this in early February and opening in the middle of January was Star Wars: Rise of the Resistance. As you can see, the transition under that, and we are now in Galaxy's Edge. It is a uh, it's a very very good ride but it's not easy to get on. They're currently doing a boarding pass system. This might not be what they're doing when you were here, but when we were going, they, uh... so you acquire a boarding pass by using the Disneyland app, and you have like maybe 30 seconds to acquire one right when the park opens, and then they're gone for the entire day. It is so insanely stressful. And you have to uh, wait until your boarding pass is called? Yes. Which depends on the ride. And how be... well the ride wants to behave. Correct, it could be a few hours or it could be in the air. Yeah. It's definitely worth trying because, in my opinion, it is the greatest ride in the entire world. It is stunningly good. So much technology involved. 
and it is just fantastic. And you can see some of the facade over here hiding Rise of the Resistance. And um, this would be where you would get on. Right here, once your boarding group is called, you enter right over there. Now, I don't feel like it's Star Wars until this part. Yes. Like, you would have no idea you were on that too. No, no, no. It was kind of a, uh, kind of a, 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 a subtle transition. Correct. Now, you clearly know that you are in Star Wars land with the X-Wings and, and that kind of stuff. That big rock work there, that is all the Rise of the Resistance Mega Ride. But that's the great thing about Star Wars land is it is a, it's really pretty. And you feel like you kind of exit Disneyland. Yes, it doesn't feel like Disneyland, mm -hmm. which could be a complaint for some people would have. I could see that. And of course, with it being Star Wars, obviously known for merchandise, there's merchandise everywhere. Mm -hmm. These booths here sell a lot of uh, Rise of the Resistance style stuff because this is over where you exit the attraction. Oh. Molly, how's the boarding groups looking? Are we up yet? I know last time I checked, we were two away. I don't know. Good and also Star Wars Land, it is big. Like the rest of Disneyland kind of feels small and smaller pathways. Still two away. Two groups away. So uh, Star Wars Land, big pathways and a very large land. I feel like this has to be the largest land in Disneyland. Yes, there is a little bit of empty space like right here. Yeah. Feels empty on when we first walked in. But it's also, it's designed for thousands and thousands Correct. of people to be here. And it's supposed to be kind of a different feel. Uh, it very much is a different feel. And I really like it. I know it gets some mixed reviews. I liked it a lot more once Rise of the Resistance did open up. It's a very pretty and well themed. Oh yeah, I mean, now, the, the amount of money they must have spent on this place, just stunning. Yes. Now I would have preferved to probably have more see characters yeah. from like the original trilogy yeah but again it's very hard to do that with Star Wars because there's so many different planets yeah like, and there's no like I, it, it doesn't have the same effect as like a Harry Potter where you know like oh you, you want to go to Hogsmeade you want to go to everyone wants to go to Diagon LA place. here Star Wars doesn't really have that like you want to be in a Star Wars land but there's no like oh my gosh I got it outside the Millennium Falcon which they do have now this area is actually really neat it's like a marketplace with lots of little shops and whatnot and again, it just feels like you're on a, a different planet kind of thing. And there's a lot of hidden details all throughout. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, one of my favorites is uh, over here, the water fountain, where like a creature will pop up, like in uh, Star Wars Episode Four. Buy all sorts of Star Wars stuff here. Um, all these shops, they're very well detailed, and they do also like different merchandise. So you, you got like a plushie shop and Chewy's right here. Very cool. So this is like plushies in this shop. Toys over here. Chewbacca, who's just as tall as he's in the movies. The big dude. They kind of just wander around the characters. Yeah, they do just wander around. There, so there's a lot of like Black Spire Outpost stuff, and it's some really good merchandise in there. And then over here, you can buy a uh, weird popcorn, which is decent. Decent popcorn, yeah. I don't know if it's you know, worth it. It's a long line. Yeah. But decent. And then we move into we're following Chewy here into Ronto's Roasters. We can get the Ronto wrap, which is like a space hot dog. Really tasty. Expensive, but really good. Mm -hmm. Like if you want a $13 space hot dog. You can buy one here. Quality props in this place. A lot, of, a lot of people here in this Star Wars section of the park. I guess everyone's kind of following Chewbacca. You can see um, the gimmick for Ronto's Roasters is that they are cooking meats on an old pod racing engine. As here, you can see the animatronic guy cooking them right here. Chewbacca on his path as it was pretty much the same path we were on. Now this big building here is Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. Really cool shop. This is my favorite shop in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Uh, High-end collectible merchandise. There's also an animatronic in there who's very neat. 
And uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, you could spend a thousand dollars in there and even have the shop. Oh yeah. Over here, underneath the spaceship, is Docking Bay Seven, the main restaurant. And then, boom, the big reveal. What everyone wants to see. Yes, the Millennium Falcon. And uh, it's it's really quite the sight. I mean, built in full scale, just spectacular looking. You get wonderful pictures. Yeah. The photo pass people will do it, so. It only looks like you're the only one there, Correct. the way they set up the pictures. It's really cool. It is, it's really just a stunning kind of sight. And the alcove they built for it, too. Now, this is also the entrance to uh, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, mm -hmm. which is uh, the ride where you get to fly the Millennium Falcon. I will say, while I really enjoy Star Wars Land, I do not like the ride. It's uh, better if you're the pilot. Yeah, if you're the right pilot, it's cool, but man, it, to me... The right pilot's okay. Yeah. To me, it really, it feels like a Disney Quest attraction yeah. or a Dave & Buster's ride. Honestly, out of all the rides at Disneyland, it's, it's probably towards the bottom of the list. The queue is my favorite Yeah, the queue's part. awesome, the pre-show's awesome. Then you get to the ride itself, and it's... I like Star Tours better. Uh, something I do enjoy, this line here is for Oga's Cantina, the space-themed pub, which is wonderful. Drinks are going to be expensive, but it's important to note that Oga's Cantina is the only place regular people can get booze here at Disneyland. So, uh... If you want, I would have, if you haven't been here before, I definitely recommend Ogas for a drink. They have Captain uh, DJ Rex from the old Star Tours ride is in there DJing, and it's it's fun, wacky space drinks. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a themed bar, and that qualifies as a theme bar. It is a very well themed bar. Mm -hmm. Move it along. Here you got a uh, Kylo Ren's ship. We kind of get into the. Uh, the darker side of Galaxy's Edge here with the more the evil characters. Got a shop over there that sells all sorts of first order stuff. And over here is the milk stand, which is uh, just like if you ever wanted the blue or green milk they sell in Star Wars, they, uh, they've got it over there. Not not the tastiest uh, of items, I would say. That's one of the exits to... Uh... Yeah, that will take you closer to Fantasyland. If you exit over there, that will bring you closer to Fantasyland. Now, we are heading towards the exit that takes you to Frontierland. But, I mean, there's a, there is a lot of detail in this mm -hmm. area. And there, there's a lot of stuff you can do with the Disney Play app as well, where you um, can go on missions and stuff like that. Now, we're not quite done with Star Wars yet. You got two, two more shop kind of things and upscale experiences before we exit. And again, you can tell, like, we've been walking around Star Wars Land for just forever. Uh, over a lot, a lot of detail. Yeah, a lot of detail. Now, this shop here is the Droid Depot, which for $100, you can go and build your own droid. There's also a lot of cool stuff for sale in there as well. Like, I would not spend $100 to build a droid, but I do like going in there and seeing all, like, R2-D2 and DJ Rex stuff and, and the like. Got yeah, more detail over here. And then the final thing to point out is uh, over there is that's where you get to build a lightsaber. And if you thought the droids were expensive for 100 bucks, that's 200 bucks uh, to build a lightsaber over there. But I've heard it's really cool. Yeah. And that'll kind of do it for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We're going to head out that way. And now heading on out of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and into Frontierland. Oh, Emily, you and uh, Molly, this was your first time on the Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride. Yes. As we exit here, what do you, what do you think? Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, definitely, probably the best ride ever, I agree. Yeah. Uh, there's so many, as we were talking about, wow moments. There's so many uh, things that are like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Yeah. How did they do that? And the technology in there is, oh my goodness. Yes. So, I would say it's worth it. Definitely try to get a boarding pass. Oh yeah, get here early. I have no idea how long that boarding pass system will last, but uh, right. while they're doing it. It's definitely worth the wait, actually. Yes. And from a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago, we go into the, uh, to the Old West. Now, Frontierland is not one of the larger sections here of Disneyland, and it's marquee attraction you can see right in front of us, and that is, of course, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, the wildest ride in the wilderness. Yes. Uh, a wonderful version of it. Uh, great ending, wonderful, I love wonderful, ending. wonderful uh, roller coaster, family-friendly roller coaster too. 
filled with waterfalls and animatronic characters and caves and caverns. I definitely think the ending of Big Thunder Mountain makes mm -hmm. it. Yes. Definitely. The ending is way more secure right here. You can see the uh, train coming by here. Just a very pretty shot here of the of the mountain. Now, Big Thunder Mountain is one of the Fast Pass attractions here. Fast Pass is Disney's free ride reservation system, where if you scan your ticket in a kiosk near the ride, you get a time to come back later. Um, it's really the key to not waiting in long lines at Disneyland Park. If you do want to pay $15 per person, you can get a digital version of Fast Pass called Max Pass, which is really nice because then you don't have to walk to the rides themselves. Here's a remnant of the old mine train through Nature's Wonderland ride from back in the 70s. You can see the old tracks there. Essentially a, a, a team version of Big Thunder Mountain before they built the fun one. So pretty. All right, Let's see the train going around there. Now I do recommend the Max Pass system. I definitely think it's worth that value, um, just because you'll save yourself you'll save yourself so much walking throughout the day by using it. Um, ever since they've started Max Pass, it used to be ten bucks. Now it's fifteen bucks per person. I, I've been using it and I really enjoy it. Also, it does give you a little bit of benefit because instead of waiting two hours for your next Fast Pass, you only wait 90 minutes. So you'll end up getting on a lot more rides. And that's good. Now, we were talking about the sailing ship Columbia earlier. You do board that over here in Frontierland. A lot of people, you can tell, uh, if you're not familiar with Disneyland, it is one of the busiest theme parks on Earth. We are here on a not particularly too busy day either, but you can see there's just people everywhere. I do really enjoy Big Thunder Mountain. I would say it's probably my second favorite version of the attraction. Uh, I think out of the ones I've been on, the Paris version is the best. Then this one and the Disney World one coming in uh, third place, but all of them are good. I think, again, the ending is what makes yep. this one better here than Disney Yeah, obviously World. the same ending is in the Thunder in Paris. Yep. And here's where you board those uh, those big ships we were talking about earlier. Here's the dock. You see a whole bunch of people getting ready to get on the big sailing ship Columbia pirate ship. Making our way out of Frontierland, you do have the Golden Horseshoe over here, which is an indoor uh, restaurant and show venue. Very old-timey saloon kind of thing. You've got uh, Rancho El Del Zocalo over here, which if you're looking for uh, Spanish food or uh, Mexican food, burritos, that kind of stuff, this is going to be where you want to eat. We definitely eat. Yeah, good food. Good food. Yeah. We've had that. The one I would recommend. I definitely used to a, I would recommend that over like a burger and fries or something like that. Nice. Do also have a large shop over here in the Frontierland section of the park. Out there and you can walk. There's like all these like tourists. And I uh, uh, wouldn't be Frontierland as well without the uh, the Frontierland shooting arcade. Or as they call it here, the shooting exposition. Now it is something you do have to pay extra for. I think it's probably 50 cents? 50 cents. You see the cool entrance to Rancho del Zocalo over there. And obviously like uh, Frontierland, not, not the biggest section of the park. Probably not one you're gonna spend a ton of time in. Unless you really like, you, maybe if you have a kid that loves river boats or something. And you do exit through the uh, the big fort area here. And then we have a connection. Yeah, that's how you could get you could get to Adventureland Adventure that way. And this will take us right back into that central hub that we were in earlier. And we're going to take a different path this time. Yeah, I do think the little moat around is really cute. Yes. Uh, you're normally home to ducks. I do like ducks. I do like ducks. Ducks are uh, Drew the Intern's favorite animal. Oh, yeah, the Mallard duck what? is Drew the Intern's favorite animal. After seven years out, I'm going to learn a new fact. Yep, yeah, yeah. Kind of a weird dude. Favorite animal, ducks. Favorite food, whipped cream. <laughs> uh, yes. Yep. Uh, anyways. All right, we did mention uh, the uh, the Fantasy Fair area earlier. That's Princess Meet and Greets and uh, Maurice's <laughs> Cheese Cart for Molly. Mm, there's also some cool little details in there, too. Like, there's a... A really cool like Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, little animated show along with uh, Figaro's over there from, mm -hmm. from Pinocchio, the adorable cat. So that's in that section over there. I also do really like the shows they do in the Royal Theater. Yes. I think right now they're doing uh, their comic retellings of Tangled and Beauty and the Beast. And they're, they're done uh, sort of tongue in cheek. 
So it's uh, not like your standard show where like the characters come out and redo the, the story. Now we are going to walk right through the center, the icon of Disneyland, Sleeping Beauty Castle. Now inside of Sleeping Beauty Castle there is a walkthrough experience, which is pretty neat. It tells you the story of Sleeping Beauty with little maquettes and some special effects and that kind of thing. Very pretty castle, small castle. Yeah, especially if you're uh, used to the Disney World yes. version. And we also got Snow White's Grotto over there. You can see a whole bunch of people hanging out over there. I do think it's very pretty uh, area near the castle. Oh yeah. Very well themed. Mm -hmm. And we moved on. We got a whole bunch of walls, a whole bunch of construction walls. Because Disneyland does operate every single day of the year for at least 12 hours a day. You know, at some point you gotta fix stuff up. Yes. So chances are when you come to Disneyland, no matter when you come, there's gonna be walls up. And things are gonna be getting fixed up. You wanna go through that Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough? Entrance is gonna be right over there. And there's a walkway to Tomorrowland, right through the castle here. And then back to the uh, Fantasy Fair yep. area. Now over here is the Bibbidi Boppidi Boutique, which is, um, if you have little girls, it might be a stop for you. That's essentially uh, princess makeovers for little ones. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Uh, always a long line here on the right at Peter Pan's Flight, which is a traditional dark ride. Really fun, but always a long line. So you don't have fast pass. No fast pass for it. Honestly, if you're going to Disneyland and uh, coming here at park opening, this is the ride I normally recommend people come to first. Like if you get here at opening, rope drop this because it, there's always a long line. You go to Neverland on a pirate ship. It's pretty neat. Now over here, all closed up, is Snow White's Scary Adventures. It's out for a big refurbishment for the first half or so of uh, 2020 here, where it is getting uh, some new, uh, some new scenes, some new magic, that kind of thing. And behind tarps here, uh, you can see the, first of all the Sword in the Stone, and this is where they have the carousel. Closed right now, but uh, you know you got to fix things up at some point. Another dark ride over here, Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Now I will say. Um, Either come to Fantasyland right away or come to Fantasyland in the evening. That's when you're gonna get the shortest line for these rides. Also, these are not large scale spectacular rides. These are more like, you know, two or three minute rides. They're all neat, they're fun. But if they have a 25 to 30 minute wait, I'm not sure if they're worth that. And a lot of the fantasy rides don't have fast passes. Yes. Over there is where you could board the Casey Jr. Circus Train. Now this is not the big railroad that goes around the park. This is a different road, railroad. That a little bit more exciting than that. You also can put kids in monkey cages and stuff like that. So I, I like. It does, but that that's it's it's what it is. It's a circus train. And uh, chewing it, it sounds very wrong. Yes, um, but it, it, it's neat. It's two ways to see Storybook Land. You can go by the Casey Jr. Circus Train, or you can go by the boats. Also, another uh, staple here at Disneyland is a uh, Dumbo, which I guess just came up from a, uh, a downtime. But uh, there is Dumbo. Moving along to something that uh, we uh, we live in Orlando, Florida, obviously home to Walt Disney World, and we do not have our Mr. Toad's Wild Ride anymore. Mm -hmm. But they still have it here at Disneyland, and it's super fun. Normally this line is not as bad as some of the other ones. Like normally Mr. Toad and Pinocchio don't have that bad. Peter Pan and, and Alice in Wonderland tend to have the lines that are a little bit worse. Obviously entrance to Dumbo over here on the left. The Mad Hatter, if you want to go to Disneyland and get a fun hat or a headband, good place to do so. Now I do love this. That uh, Monster of the Whale over there is how you start your entrance into Storybook Land if you take these Storybook Land canal boats. So these are very small kind of boat rides with a, uh, with you do have a, a skipper on it that'll tell you some tales. And back there is like miniature versions of all sorts of fairy tale castles. Mm -hmm. And it's neat. A really good ride for the little ones too. Also tends to have a pretty good size line. That one, uh, that one doesn't put through a ton of people. But we're gonna go uh, this way in Fantasyland now, which is kind of where you get to sort of like an Alice in Wonderland mini land between the teacups and the uh, Alice in Wonderland dark ride. See the teacups over there. 
Of course, another one of those staple attractions for a Magic Kingdom Castle Park. You gotta have a teacups. Now, I really, really like the Alice in Wonderland ride. Uh, indoor, outdoor ride where you're riding little tiny caterpillars. Really fun, really colorful. Lots of interesting scenes. I did get a, a, some new magic involved a couple of years ago, so it's, it's got some projection mapping in there, and it's really neat, but does always tend to have, you know, a 20 to 30 minute line. Yes. As you can see, like, that's, that's a wait. Of course, you can see the teacups going there, over there. Now, uh, what I would recommend if you're coming to Disneyland, I would say go to Peter Pan first and then go to Alice in Wonderland second. That is always what I recommend. A lot of your other rides, they will have a, you know, a fast pass option or a single rider option. Like the Matterhorn Mountain has both of those. Uh, Matterhorn, uh, historical for uh, us coaster dorks like myself, is the first tubular steel tracked roller coaster and a wonderful ride. It, uh, you know, animatronics through caves. Really enjoy the Matterhorn. A little, a little bumpy. It is. But it is a uh, 60 year old roller coaster, so. That's kind of what you expect from a 60-year-old roller coaster. You see the entrance and everything is over here. Matterhorn does have a single rider line, as a, a bunch of attractions do here at Disneyland Park. Um, you got a single rider line on Space Mountain, the Matterhorn, Star Tours, what else, Molly? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Uh, Splash Mountain. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's that. That's always a good way to sort of save on time a little bit. More shops over here, and you can see all these lights as this is the um, the parade route area. The parades normally they're not running one right now. They're a brand new Disneyland Day Parade starts at the end of February. Should be pretty neat. I, I like the parades. I think they're always very well done. Big giant floats. I'm not a big parade person. Yeah, I like uh, it more than you do. Yeah, but no, Disneyland's are usually really good. Yeah, and then it'll start over here and then run through Fantasyland onto Main Street. Here we go. We have Mary. And as you can see in the background over there is our next destination. Another one of those those staples, as you can probably tell from the music, and that is It's a Small World. The happiest cruise that ever sailed here at the happiest place on earth. And uh, it's a lot of uh, like a love it or hate it thing. We'll say if you have little kids, they might go crazy for it. Like uh, Molly, nieces. Molly's nieces who are two and a half. Yep, they uh, favorite ride at Disney World. That's all they talk about. They yep. asked my sister to come back to ride It's a Small World. All right, it's a Small World. That's our next stop, so we'll pick up things in a moment. Long ride there on It's a Small World, about a 15-minute boat ride. As we head into the back right corner of Disneyland, home to Mickey's Toontown. Now, before you get into Mickey's Toontown, there are two more things. One, you do have that Fantasyland or Toontown, whichever one you want to say, train station over here on the left. Also on the left is the uh, Fantasyland Theater. Not running any shows today. Normally, it does show Mickey and the Magical Map, which is a really, really nice stage show. Some cool technology, some cool pre uh, characters and stuff like that. And uh, good to sit down for a while, too, during your day at Disneyland. But we are gonna go under the train tracks and into Mickey's Toontown, which is um, that and Fantasyland, they're kind of like the most kid-friendly sections mm -hmm. of, of Disneyland Park. Now, Toontown is only home to two rides, but it's also home, if you have kids that want to meet the characters, it is a good place to go, because this is obviously the, the colorful cartoon world where Mickey Mouse lives. And also, it is um, a dead end. So we are not good. We're, at some point we're going to cut this and end up back towards the Matterhorn because there's only one way in and one way out of Toontown. Yeah, ready? I think my favorite part of Toontown is the architecture because it's all done in this awesome cartoony wacky style. Now if you've been to the park before you do know there's normally like uh, cartoon mountains back there. Those have all been removed as they are starting to build a brand new ride back here in Toontown. Right. Like you can see some of the cartoon mountains over there but back here they're gone because they're building a brand new ride we call Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway pretty much a screen based projection mapping kind of ride I'm gonna open up in 2022 should be a good time opens up in uh, Orlando next month now the big ride here is Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin which is a fun time again very similar, I guess a little bit bigger in scale than your Fantasyland Dark Rides. Uh, it does run Fast Pass. And also there's a cool fountain over here. 
Also, you could tell like when the era of when this was built, when Roger Rabbit was like the a biggest big deal, deal, as he got his own ride and fountain, and even Toontown was from the film Roger Rabbit, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes. Which I don't know if kids know who it is. I don't think so. But it is filled with like fun gags and stuff like that and kids for them to run around and explore. A couple of shops and restaurants as well over here. Um, if you don't have kids, this probably won't be a place you're going to spend a ton of time. If you do have kids, you might spend quite a bit of time. You can see some of the construction equipment there, just getting ready to build the runaway railway. But yeah, I just love the cartoony nature of the whole place. You do have Goofy's Playhouse over here, which is good for kids because there's not really a playground at Disneyland. This is the only one. I believe it used to be like a bounce house on the inside, but that was kind of long gone now. Now it's just kind of a playhouse. Uh, dead ahead, that is uh, Mickey Mouse's house, where you could go to meet Mickey Mouse himself. And to the right, of course, is Minnie Mouse's house. Again, I love that architecture. Like, it's so cartoony, it is so wonderful. Uh, you've also got a great fountain over here as well. And uh, Donald Duck doesn't have a house, he's got a boat. Another play area for kids to wander around in. Uh, now, we talked a little bit about the area of when this was built with uh, Roger Rabbit. Well, I think it might be even be more relevant here as their roller coaster is Gadget's Go Coaster. A gadget from Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Yes. That gadget. The classic one. Oh, I love that. I, I love that cartoon, cartoon too. Uh, I'm kind of surprised it's never got rethemed over the years. But yeah, just a simple family roller coaster. Very, uh, very kid friendly. Uh, you're not really missing anything. I don't think you've ever been on it, Molly, right? No, I'm one, we went on it one time. Okay, we went on it once. And you got another playground over there themed to Chippendale. And there goes the roller coaster. Now, with this being a dead end, we're gonna we're gonna cut here and meet back up by Matterhorn Mountain. Turn the camera back on over here by Matterhorn Bobsled. Also, Edelweiss snacks where you can buy chimichangas. 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 Pretty good snack. I guess that'll fill you up, man. Yeah. Chimichanga. As we move along, this is the uh, the fast pass distribution area for the Matterhorn. <laughs> so if you're not on. Uh, if you're not on Fast Pass, uh, or if you're not on Max Pass, you would pick them up over here. I do also, like the Fast Pass. Yeah, the way, way they're done. Yeah. Also over there, that covered seating area was the old uh, Motorboat Lagoon Cruise uh, boarding station. Okay. Well, long, long dead attraction. That was closed, I think, in the early 90s. Uh, I, I believe at one time, towards the end of its run, too, it got rethemed into, uh, like, the Gummy Bears. Do you remember the Gummy Bears from the I Disney Afternoon? Yep, it was like a like voyage to Gummy Glen or something like that towards the end of the run. Huh, All right, now you're going to see the monorail coming in right in front of us. <laughs> now the monorail is kind of an interesting ride here as it takes guests from the Disneyland Hotel, downtown Disney area, directly into Disneyland Park. Always a fun ride. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Matterhorn sort of straddles in between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. As here we are on the right, that is Fantasyland. On the left, Tomorrowland. This big lagoon here is home to the Finding Nemo submarine voyage. You can see the, the subs getting loaded in over there. Now, I really like this ride. Yeah, I think it's, it's really neat. Cool it's a long ride and it's so interesting to get in an actual submarine and go on like this 10 or 15 minute journey. Uh, so we'll get a shot of one of them moving in a little bit, but uh, there's Happy Ducks. Moving along past Matterhorn Mountain. Now I will say Tomorrowland is probably uh, not one of the most loved areas of Disneyland Park. It's definitely one of the ones you hear like, you always hear like, oh, there's gonna be a Tomorrowland refurbishment coming or a Tomorrowland redo coming or something like that. So I can definitely see that happening because you do have a lot of areas over here that are kind of ripe for refurbishment or uh, ready to get redone. Again, you can walk all the way around the Matterhorn Mountain as well. You can see the cool waterfalls and stuff like that. You do have a 
quick service food establishment over here. I think this is like kind of your burger and fry kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We've eaten there for breakfast. Yeah, well, they do serve hot breakfast. If you are looking for a hot breakfast, uh, we had a breakfast burrito, I believe. Uh, they also sometimes here in the evening, they'll have a band perform on the stage. Mostly on the weekends, I believe, like, a, like Friday and Saturday nights. And they can sort of see the stage over there in the middle. Now the entrance for that Finding Nemo submarine voyage is going to be over here. That's what these people are in line for. Doesn't look like too bad of a line for the subs, but uh, the, just keep in mind the subs, because you have to like walk downstairs to get it, almost like a ladder type stairs to get into a submarine. It doesn't put people through very well. So there's that going to be that entrance to the submarine voyage. To the right is the entrance to the monorail. And then this building here is the entrance to Autopia which is a simple kind of car ride. And you see a lot of amusement parks, like antique autos kind of thing. Cool thing about this, there is a robot and bird brought to you by Honda. So there are some like limited animatronics throughout the, the course of the road ride, which would make it from something that I would normally skip to like, if it doesn't have a line, I like riding on Utopia because I like animatronics and robots are cool. Robots are cool. All right, this big round building here is the Star Wars launch bay. I just really like Star Wars meet and greets and some props and stuff. If you are looking for the Tomorrowland station for the, the railroad, it's going to be over there. Of course, my favorite stop on the railroad, because it's the one before you see the dinosaurs. And uh, I talked before about how I love robots. Well, they, those are robot dinosaurs and uh, both things that are cool. It's not something that you expect either on the railroad. No, and makes no sense in Tomorrowland. Ah, no. So you go back in time? Yep, you go back in time. All right, Shooting Into the Sun is another iconic attraction here at Disneyland, and that is, of course, Space Mountain. Uh, one thing I love about the Space Mountain here is that, depending on what time of year you go, you might get a different ride. Right now, it's a classic version of Space Mountain. Sometimes they do a Star Wars version called Hyper Space Mountain. And then other times, they'll do a Go Haunted Mansion Ghost Galaxy. We have another restaurant over here, themed to the aliens from Pizza Planet. Uh, there's also a theater over here that used to show Captain EO for many years. Now it just shows random Disney things. Um, like right now, I think it's a preview for Onward, the upcoming Pixar film. But I'll show a, a preview for a movie that's on its way up. I prefer Captain EO myself. Big fan of Hooter, the space elephant. Over here, you can see the old loading station for the People Mover, and then it was part of the Rocket Rods for a while. And now it just sits here abandoned for about 20 years. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, it is. It's just abandoned for about 20 years. Just taking up space. And another reason why I think like at some point they gotta redo Tomorrowland. It's also awkward at the very entrance. That has been fixed actually. Since oh, like, yeah, oh, they, they did improve right, traffic flow over there. Good. I'm um, not not 100% fixed, but they they have made improvements. Mm -hmm. Over here on the right, you got a really cool mural with Space Mountains and stuff on it. On the right is going to be Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, an interactive shooting ride themed along the Buzz Lightyear characters. Pretty fun time. And on the left is Star Tours, so if you didn't have enough Star Wars in, in Galaxy's Edge, well, they've got another ride here. Cool thing about this, it's got different versions it could go. They just updated it for the new Rise of Skywalker movie, so it's a very re-rideable attraction. I really like Star Trek. I, I actually, I have not seen the newest version of it. So later on today, if the line's not bad, I would definitely hop on Star Tours. Even though we do have the same one in Orlando. And we are almost towards the end of the Grand Circle Tour here of Disneyland Park. As you can see, the, uh, the final ride we're gonna walk past is the Astro Orbiter. Just another Dumbo-style spinner ride. Not a very long line for it right now. And you know, nothing too wild here, but if you have kids, you get a you know, nice view of the castle and stuff like that. And that will do it. That is our full circle tour of Disneyland Park. Um, if you made it this far, thanks. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope if you're planning a trip to Disneyland or just miss Disneyland that this helped you out. If you have any questions or comment about Disneyland Park, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, I come here about once or twice a year and I'm always reading up about it. I love the history and all the secrets. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. Uh, Molly, thank you for putting up with this for the past hour or so we've been filming. 
Let's go, I can go buy you a corn dog now for being a good girl. <laughs> just, just like children. And uh, guys. I'm not, I'm not a dog, not a child. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, with that awkward ending, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.